Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 9, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We do have a very active sky this week, and it starts right out of the gate with a very active sun. Now, think of the sun as a principle, right? It, it gives heat, and it brings a sense of uh, heightened energy to whatever planet it is that it touches. Uh, it brings in its own way some urgency, but also some enlightenment as well. It makes one particular part of the sky just a little bit warmer, an area where we have to pay just a little bit more attention to. Well, when we have such an active sun, it is ultimately the sun that in some ways as the center of the universe is delivering its energy. Now, this actually goes against a certain principle and that is what the ancients believed. So the ancients believed that the further out a planet, the more slow moving a planet, the more powerful it is. And so this is like sort of one of those principles when we look at what is happening in the sky, when we look at conversations between planets, what is the more dominant energy? It's going to be the more slower moving, the further out planet. But that is a little bit different. And this principle uh, changes and turns on its head just a little bit when we're talking about the sun. Because the sun is uh, the core and the center of the universe and represents the core and the center of ourselves, as much as it is that the sun receives energy, it is also an energy that is exchanged with whatever planet it is aspecting. Now, when I say in aspect to, that is using astro talk. That's how astrologers say in a conversation with other planets. And so the energy ends up being a little bit more balanced, a little bit more of an exchange. And again, the sun will heat up any other planet it is aspecting, it is speaking to. So this energy, a heightened solar energy is with us as we start this week. On the one hand, we are going to have the sun speaking with Neptune in a connection of tension, the type of conversation that astrologers call a square. But the sun will also be standing across the sky from Jupiter. Now it is Jupiter and Neptune, these two planets who are dancing throughout the year. And their dance is defined as one of tension as well, what astrologers call a square. And so what this is doing, this larger configuration, thanks to the sun, is essentially setting up a T-square and beginning to heighten this already strong conversation that is defining much of this year. Now, I actually spoke about this conversation between Jupiter and Neptune in the Jupiter Special Horoscope uh, for this year. So I will try to link to that somewhere. You can see that on my YouTube channel. But for this week, what is important is that there's this other energy coming in, not only heightening, bringing heat, bringing awareness to what is happening between Neptune and Jupiter, but is also adding its own perspective, its own breath, its own wisdom as well. Now with these two planets, with Jupiter moving through its home sign of Sagittarius, where it is encouraging us to be hopeful, to be optimistic, to think expansively. And with Neptune also in its home sign of Pisces, encouraging us to connect, to feel, to be compassionate. Well, it is now the sun in the sign of Gemini, which is encouraging us to think rationally, to have a healthy sense of detachment. Well, how is it that we can bring all these elements together? And where is it that perhaps one of these areas can get a little bit carried away? Where is it that we can get too carried away on what we're feeling and the energy of a moment uh, or the energy of what it is that we believe we are guided towards regardless of what it is that our rational mind is telling us? Where is it that we believe faith is more than enough to do all it is that we need to do without necessarily working out some of the details without necessarily getting the right information? Where is it that we're ready to jump in fully uh, to a course of action 
while at the same time overlooking some very key questions that need to be asked. Well, this is where some of that energy of questions being there without us wanting to acknowledge the questions being there is going to be heightened. And look, here's the thing. I really believe that hope is the most human emotion. It is one of the things that characterizes humanity. There are mythologies around this as well. This is an understanding going way back uh, when we look at the stories and the myths of our predecessors, of uh, those who came before us, of our ancestors. We see this theme around hope coming up again and again about just how valuable it is to the human experience. And so I think that it is very normal sometimes to see things with the eyes of hope, to not see those details because we don't really want to, or at least unconsciously don't really want to. So just keep in mind that that tendency is a little bit higher right about now. Now it is gonna be next week that Jupiter and Neptune will have the second of three exact connections taking place over the course of this year, yes, but next week it perfects. The sun now is gonna to begin to heighten that energy that much more. So it isn't just isolated to a moment. It isn't just isolated to next week and what's happening then, but rather this sense of awareness of where it is that we are wanting to integrate our faith and what we're feeling with our optimism and where it is maybe that we need that sense of healthy detachment well that is going to come into focus now but once we get into next week the great thing is is that saturn is going to be speaking with neptune in harmony bringing about a more grounded perspective of course i'll talk about that as we get there but this week saturn is active as well it's saturn and pluto both will be speaking with the sun now this is a type of conversation that astrologers call a quincunx a quincunx is a, a type of aspect that is used more in modern astrology and what i mean by that is when we look at uh, the foundational text to western astrology which is tetrabiblos by ptolemy uh, we don't see a discussion of this particular type of conversation this aspect, this type of conversation was developed uh, later to suit more uh, how it is that astrology has evolved to what it is today. So I personally like to think of the Ptolemaic aspects as more dominant and I focus more on them, but there are moments when you see these more modern conversations coming to the forefront in ways that are gonna speak to us powerfully. And that's when I like to talk about them. With the sun perfecting its connection with Saturn right around Monday and then perfecting its connection with Pluto right around Thursday, well, it is gonna be Saturn and Pluto that are in a way a saving grace. It is in surprising moments that we are gonna be asked to bring in a more grounded perspective to have a deeper connection to the practical realities and the best steps forward but also to gain insight into the truth of a situation that actually might be uh, quite confusing, might be foggy, might be misty even, where it is that we are seeing with eyes of hope but actually need to get to the core truth, we will be granted that perspective in sometimes truly surprising ways and as a result can be a healthy form of transformation in our own lives but also a force of transformation in the lives of others around us as well. And I think this is part of the great opportunity. Where is it that conversation can elevate the energy? Where is it that talking things out, reasoning things through can help to bring about the balance that we are really needing? Well, this is where those connections, however random as we move about our lives, uh, those conversations we have with people, even if they're online, can actually end up being a very important counterbalance to what otherwise could be an emotion that we could just dive into and not even realize that we are in. There is a book that I know I have mentioned before. It was such an impactful book in my life when I read it as a young person. Um, and it was a huge bestseller uh, back in the late 80s and into the 90s as well. And that book is called The Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck. And the road less traveled is essentially the road of therapy, of reflection, of meaningful change. And Scott M. Peck was a psychiatrist as well. And so uh, this is something that he advocated for um, in many different ways and throughout his books. So 
there is a chapter in that book about love and I remember in this chapter uh, the focus of it was that love is honest and what that means is when you really love someone you tell them the truth you give them your opinion if you see them doing something that isn't uh, good for them isn't healthy is self-destructive or you know you see them doing something that you know is a not as elevated a behavior as you know they're capable of you're honest with them about it. You tell them the truth, even when it's hard, and especially when it's hard. And when it is love, there's a level of vulnerability that comes with that honesty as well, where not only are you being honest about how you feel about something that they directly did with you, but you also are honest with them about what it is that you are perceiving, even if on the surface it doesn't necessarily involve you. And so in this way, love is honest. And I feel as I look at this energy that a big part of this is being honest with ourselves, being honest with others, and especially where love is there, we are going to find the ability to communicate and share from a more honest perspective. Now, the great thing is that just because it's honest, it doesn't mean that it has to be mean spirited or it has to come from a place where you are intentionally hurting someone. No, that is not what Scott M. Peck meant. What he was saying is that at least you are forthright with this person about what it is that you are perceiving about your opinions. You don't try to hide yourself and what you are thinking, um, but rather you are willing to share it again, even when it's hard. Now, the great thing is what we're going to have happen right at the beginning of the week is Venus move into the sign of Gemini. And I think this is going to bring beauty to our words. It's going to bring love to our words as well. And we will find ways to communicate that which is difficult, that which is confusing, that which may be uh, lending itself to a sense of our own feelings being a little bit on a roller coaster, which is possible this week for some people. But where it is that we feel that our feelings are not on even keel, we'll be able to bring love to that very area but that will come from that rational perspective and it will come through mind it will come through conversation it will come through connecting with others as equals and sharing from an honest place mars becomes very active in the sky as we move towards the end of the week doing a few interesting things so one is that mars will speak in supreme harmony with Neptune. This in and of itself gives it an especially dreamy qualities and the energy of dreams and that we can go after our dreams and we can make it happen. Well, that will be very strongly felt as part of the collective. There may even be some uh, examples of this as well. But what is also happening at this time is that Mars is standing across the sky from Saturn and notably, will be meeting the north node in the sky now if you remember the year ahead horoscope that i did uh, when i talked about 2019 uh, i spoke a lot about how saturn and pluto would be moving over the south node and what that meant for us as a collective well now with mars moving over the north node while speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune, I feel like this is going to be a glimpse into what is possible, a glimpse into the direction in which we are going as a collective, and a glimpse into where it is that we truly can cultivate a feeling of family, a feeling of community that is more universal than we've known it to be in a while, where it is that compassion and empathy in and of itself is what family is. And where is it that we can have a deeper understanding of the direction that we want to go, that we're motivated to go, that is guided by empathy. That is what that beautiful Neptunian energy is going to help Mars to do. Now contrast that with Saturn and Saturn being mighty, mighty close to the uh, South Node right about now. And what this does suggest is that while we are looking at the direction in which we can go if we have the will, if we have the determination. We are also going to consider and contemplate where it is that we have been and what it is that we are moving away from. And part of that is going to include the structures, the more uh, parental and traditional beliefs that might have guided our life, might have guided our society. How does that contrast with the will and the passion 
for where you are today and what is your unique part going to be in this move forward towards a greater sense of unity, towards a greater sense of compassion, towards a greater sense of family, for the human family going forward from here. And what is your unique part going to be as part of this reconnection that we are going to have with each other? Well, in our own lives, I do believe that all of us are gonna have one moment where we feel like we are with family, even if we are not. We are going to feel genuine compassion, genuine empathy, and a sense of truly being understood and being with others who are like us. And how healing that is, what a priority that is, and just how it is that that can bring a spirit of change and possibility in our own lives, but also in the world as well. What I love about this week for us, I'm going to go back to Venus moving into the sign of Gemini. I think this is going to give our mind, our thoughts, our words, just the right amount of love energy that they need. But also when Venus moves through the sign of Gemini, we can see the power of persuasion at play. We can see how it is that when we are willing to speak to each other with kindness, with gentleness, how much that can open up more in our lives, more pleasant moments, more loving moments, more kindness, but also in a practical sense, more opportunity as well. And wherever it is that you are hoping to move yourself towards greater joy, greater pleasure, greater prosperity, and greater love as well, let your words lead the way. Let your thoughts set the stage because that alone can prove miracles at this time towards experiencing more love than you've known before. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you think about this week? What are you excited about? What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. I'm very excited to be up early this week. I got the video done early this week and that is because I have been very busy with launching my site, brand new site. It is up now. I hope that you will go check it out, NadiaShaw.com. That is where you will see a brand new platform. We built a brand new website from scratch. I worked with an incredible web designer, very happy to give referrals. Uh, if you want that, just let me know. Uh, but she really was so incredible and has created an incredibly new website. Like I said, it's from scratch, it's brand new, looks different, behaves differently as well. Uh, and it is a lot more user-friendly, it's a lot more intuitive. Uh, the superstar space has been revamped as well. Uh, people are really loving it. It's getting a lot of really great feedback. It was just launched on Friday and so, have a look, let me know what you think. And of course, how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the revamped all new superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And I have some amazing classes coming up online and in real time. If you can't join us in real time, don't worry. There'll be a download that you can learn from infinitely. And so I will be teaching Synchronicity University Summer School this July and into August as well. We'll have a lot of classes going on. Uh, and this particular series is a little bit different than before in that it will be a lot more practical in that I will be going through the different signs and the different houses uh, to actually help you to understand some core energies that I will be talking about. If you have read my book, Astrology Realized, you will be well prepared to keep up with the classes. I hope you absolutely enjoy them. Lots of people have signed up already. Thank you so much to each and every one of you out there. So yes, there are going to be six sessions all together childhood in the astrology chart, the midheaven, uh, happiness, which is gonna look at the part of fortune. Further thoughts on forgiveness. This will build on the last class I did during the last session. Uh, that was a very popular class on forgiveness that we did. So I'll be building on that and astrological magic, an introduction to astrological magic. Uh, we're not gonna be initiating anyone. We're not gonna be doing serious rituals or anything like that, but we're gonna explore the history, the philosophy, and just give you a few simple guidelines that is gonna help you to cultivate uh, a little bit more of a personal connection with the sky. 
and to understand how it is that astrology and magic are deeply embedded, deeply connected. Now, in-person events I have coming up quite a few. Uh, of course, I will be Labor Day weekend in Baltimore. Super excited about that. Can't wait to meet friends and fans as part of the NCGR conference and also in January 2020 under the light of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. I will be as part of a cruise event along with many other extraordinary astrologers. Uh, I will be part of this cruise and we will be having an experience together with all the participants karmically drawn to share this experience together. There will be daily uh, hands-on healing, there'll be astrology seminars, there'll be excursions. Uh, we will be leaving from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but then stopping in different cities in including in Mexico, in Honduras, and in Belize as well. So it's gonna be quite the experience, and my hope is that by participating in this cruise event, uh, it is a transformative experience. You are changed in some meaningful way that lasts and stays with you long after the cruise is over. Thank you so much to all the people who have already registered. I appreciate each and every one of you. And again, I do feel like those who are meant to be there are gonna be there and it's gonna to come together, the people who are karmically aligned to share this experience, we're all gonna be sharing this amazing experience together under the light of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. I look forward to meeting you on board. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. I feel like there was a lot of background noise. I don't know how much you heard it, how much the mic picked up, but geesh, there's a lot going on. First, my dog was really noisy, and then the streets outside got really noisy as well, and I could only wait so long. Uh, but I hope that the energy that I brought, right, the message um, and the moment that we share uh, remained strong and that really does mean so much to me and to be some small part of your sacred journey some small part of affirming greater love and greater wisdom in the world well it all means so much to me so thank you thank you again for watching it'll be a great week enjoy